Hey, Viola Rules here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So let's go ahead and head to the Chief's office. So, Chief's office. Here we go. I'm surprised that we can just get in here. Oh, is that why Damon Gant's theme has um, very heavy on the organ? Because he actually has an organ in here? Whoa, where am I? In the Chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. It's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Please don't. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Hmm? Why did you do that? Hello. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Ooh, it's probably important. I probably want that. Uh, so, right, have you been swimming lately? Is that your only, like, conversation piece? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that picture on the wall over there? Oh, uh, yeah. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. Hmm. I noticed that the King of Prosecutors trophy looks different in this photo. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall, by the way. Here's the one we have, for comparison. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. The Gantt team picture added to the court record. Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long been since has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the all the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. We're gonna get back in that room somehow. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the Chief's office. Hmm. But how? Oh, hey, it's Gumshoe. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe, were you in a meeting? I was, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long in the meeting? Actually, I had to serve everyone coffee. Oh no, he's been demoted to coffee boy. Sounds like Detective Gutch uh, Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Say, have, been, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why, do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you and you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. I falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's talk to you. It's worth crisis. Yeah, I'm gonna stop calling it SL-9, because even in the options thing, it takes the dash out, so... But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. 
Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? But, you know, because of her status, she's untouchable. Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence he presents in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his amazing talent as a prosecutor, but now with this... Aren't there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only had that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, give, give up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problem with enemies, except people like calling him Dick. I know that's his actual first name, but I feel like they do it on purpose. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Ooh, that would be bad. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. How? I thought we had it. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dirk left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Yeah. That would be Emma. Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see, I think I had, it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Um... Sure, I guess we can do that first before we go to the last uh, point, so I'll present the switchblade. Um, about this. Hey, don't tell me that. It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of? What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Now tell us before you forget again. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. <laughs> exactly. Okay, talk. Um, I guess we'll get to that in a second, but let's talk about Dark's crimes. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. How? An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident, then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. The kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then, when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came upon the scene, so he was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Wow, okay, jeez. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Was that the only time he killed a succession of people, though? Because that's the only time can you really label him a serial killer? It just means he just slaughtered a bunch of people. Serial killer usually indicates that he's been doing it for a while. I don't know. Anyway, carry on. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but unfortunately he was arrested but fortunately he was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness? He must mean Emma. Hmm. So what is it about the murder weapon? This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at and had his fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him use it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. 
when you take a good look at the, at the knife, you'll see it's broken. And I care about this because you don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway, take a guess where the broken tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. I see. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet, down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Hmm, Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Wow, okay. So, switchblade added, knife added to the court record. What do you mean, added? You mean updated? Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Ooh. Hmm. What do I need to present to make him change his mind? Let's see if Edgeworth is um, out of being uh, questioned. I wonder if Edgeworth is back in. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Huh? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Uh, tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? No, you're definitely hurt by it. Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm reading for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Now, let's talk. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can, nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that, if that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First, last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change, prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? That list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but at the time there was only one thing on my mind. I would use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture. Something seemed strange about it. Um, let's talk to him about that picture first. Let's present that to him. Because, yeah, I noticed the inconsistency already. 
I pointed it out. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken away, was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the official prosecutor trophy used up until that time. There's a story behind it. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Oh, really? Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way, Phoenix. That's a little bit suspicious. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, then the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Uh, n oh, uh, sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. Very well. In other words, no, we don't know this story, but we don't want to seem incompetent. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an armed merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other. Very perspective. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very description of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize. Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant as a, at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, we had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Hmm, okay, so updated. Okie dokie, so... Hmm. I don't think- well, actually, let me examine the room real quick, because it was mentioned that he threw down a piece of paper, which I can see on the floor here. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Really, Phoenix? That's the best you can do? Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. I didn't even look. What? Letter of re re If you can't read, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. Wait, what? Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean. I'm tired, Mr. Wright. 
I feel as if something inside me is dying. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. Oh. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Yes, I can use that. But we'll use it in the next episode. Um, if you guys enjoyed this one, give this video a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter as well as support my Patreon and check out my reaction channel. All those links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. If you aren't subscribed or you subscribe right now, be sure to hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.